Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. I'm following up on an earlier video that I did. It's uh, Dwyer 2-17-16, right? It's entitled Stephen Avery's Possible Underage Victim, Questionable Timeline 11-9-05. Now, let me first say that after making that video, people started commenting on what was in that video. Now, in the video, keep in mind, I literally referred to Stephen Avery's November 9th, 2005 statement to the police. And I made the point that in that statement, right, it's an official document. In that statement, Stephen Avery made the claim that he didn't use the burn barrel the day that Teresa Hallback goes missing, October 31st, 2005, right? Nor did he use his burn pit. That's in his statement to the police, right? I then pointed out that there's a witness other than Brandon Dassey, right? There's a witness who actually talks about seeing smoke coming out of the burn pit that day, the smoke blowing in his face and the smoke smelling of plastic and how he had to tell Stephen Avery's brother Earl Avery right to move the golf cart away from the burn barrel this is someone who by the way Stephen Avery admits to meeting that afternoon right this individual his name is Robert Fabian right isn't subject to the same lines of attack that people have levied against Brendan Dassey's testimony right Fabian grown man not a teenager right Fabian not rumored to have a low IQ right not interrogated by the police where he's making statements that he later wants to distance himself from so, curiously enough, many viewers wanted links, right? Wanted links to um, the statement that Avery gave to police where he claims he didn't use the burn barrel, right? He didn't use the burn pit on October 31st, 2005, right? They also wanted to know more about Robert Fabian's testimony. Now understand, Robert Fabian curiously is missing from the Netflix documentary. Understand too that if Fabian is correct, then we know Stephen Avery used that burn pit when Teresa Hallback goes missing. We know that that burn pit is burning before 5.20 p.m when Robert Fabian says he saw the burn pit burning, when Robert Fabian says he smelled plastic. By the way, in that burn pit is the cell phone for Teresa Hallback as well as her camera, right? Well, let me say, I've been a little bit surprised by the response. People are saying, where are the links? Where are the links? I've posted in the comments to that video, Dwyer 2-17-16, Stephen Avery's possible underage victim, I've posted the link to Stephen Avery's November 9th, 2005 police statement. You can read it for yourself, folks, official document. You can actually see him deny using the burn barrel and the burn pit on the day Hallback goes missing, right? I've also posted a link to the actual trial transcripts. You can read through the trial transcripts. Now, if you're looking for Fabian's testimony, we don't have to spin it here. I want you to read the actual testimony, right? Just read the actual testimony testimony. Now what you're going to find is if you click on the link that's listed in the comment section to that Dwyer 
2-17-16 video here up on Dwyer Crime Channel here on YouTube. If you click on that link, you're going to be directed to a PDF file that's approximately 5,507 pages. Right again, 5,507 pages. Let's make this easy for all of us. Robert Fabian's testimony, and keep in mind, Fabian is someone who Avery himself admits talking to the afternoon of the disappearance of Teresa Hallback. Fabian's testimony starts at page 2,833, right? These are the actual trial transcripts. You're going to see that Fabian actually talks about smelling plastic. You're going to find out that Avery was a friend of, excuse me, Fabian was a friend of Stephen Avery's brother, Earl Avery. On page 2,837, right, Robert Fabian talks about the smoke coming from the burn barrel at approximately 520 the day Teresa Hallback goes missing, right? 520. And on page 2839, you're going to see that he talks about how it was unusual smoke and that the smoke smelled of plastic. This one witness, folks, blows a hole and it's substantial through Stephen Avery's defense that the police somehow framed him. How could the police have been burning stuff in the burn barrel without Stephen Avery's knowledge at 5.20 the afternoon that Teresa Hallback goes missing? Right? Just food for thought. Keep in mind, Fabian's not the only person who saw things in the burn barrel, right? Or who saw things coming out of the burn barrel, right? Brandon Dassey talks about the camera being in the burn barrel. But let's throw out Brandon Dassey's testimony. Here's a grown man, third party witness, right? Not a criminal defendant talking about smoke that smelled like plastic coming out of the burn barrel the very afternoon that Teresa Hallback goes missing. Now, with Stephen Avery, either you believe him or you don't. Right? His November 9th statement, and I provided a link to it, as him saying he didn't use the burn barrel that day, right? Keep in mind, Fabian is there with Stephen Avery and Earl Avery. If the smoke was such that Robert Fabian wanted to get away from the smoke and told Earl Avery, let's get away from the smoke, right? If the smoke is obvious to Robert Avery and he's smelling plastic, how could Stephen Avery have not noticed the smoke coming from the burn barrel? Right. Also, if the police were going to frame Avery, would they do it the afternoon Teresa Hallback goes missing, right, when Avery's at the house with friends? Right. Who else could have possibly started burning something in Stephen Avery's burn barrel that day. Right? I believe it's clear that the person who was using the burn barrel that day was Stephen Avery, and that his statement to the police on November 9th, 2005, was false. Right? So, to the group out there that wants to believe that Stephen Avery is the only person telling the truth in all of this, I encourage you to look at the actual trial transcript 
Look at Robert Fabian's testimony, right? This guy's not an imaginary figure, folks. He's in the court transcript, starting at page 2833 of the 5,507 page transcript, right? Keep in mind here, I'm not making up documents, right? Further, it shouldn't be hard for any of us in this age of Google, in this age of Bing, to actually take the time to just Google or Bing the actual documents and to actually read through it, right? Don't assume that a documentary on Netflix necessarily refers to all of the witnesses, right? If a jury believes that Stephen Avery lied in his November 9th, 2005 statement to the police, if they believe he used his burn pit and he used his burn barrel on the day of the homicide, right? And if there's witnesses who saw smoke coming out of the burn pit at 5.20 p.m. that day, a time when the cops couldn't have found Teresa Hallback's belongings and thrown it into the burn pit and found her body, right? If her stuff is burning in Stephen Avery's burn pit as of 5.20 p.m. the day she goes missing, and if Stephen Avery's lying about that to the police, he's guilty. That's how I see it. Let's do this too. Let me throw out a challenge to those on the other side of the aisle who somehow think this guy's innocent. Tell us what evidence you have that the items in the burn pit that were burning on 5.20 p.m., the day Hallback goes missing, October the 31st, 2005, were planted by the police. Give us an explanation on how they could have been planted, how the police could have set them on fire, how they could have smelled of plastic without Stephen Avery noticing it. With Stephen Avery in good faith then telling the police, look, I didn't use the burn pit or the burn barrel that day. Right? For the record, Robert Fabian further Recall Stephen Avery's garage door being closed during that visit, right? The door couldn't have been open, right? Because we know there were gunshot shells on the floor of the garage, right? And Teresa Hallback, depending on what you want to believe, may have been shot in that garage. We also know from Brandon Dassey, he helped Stephen Avery clean up that garage. Interestingly enough, Right? Fabian easily could have testified, if this had happened, that the garage door was open and that there's no way funny things could have happened in the garage. But no, consistent with the prosecution's case, the garage door is closed. Right? This is while things are burning in the burn barrel. As of 5.20 p.m., October 31st, 2005, the day Hallback goes missing. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. As I've said, links to Avery's November 9th, 2005 statement to the police. Right? You don't even have to get into his misstatements to Nancy Grace, which are here on YouTube. You can just look at his actual police statement. A link to that is in the comment section to that Dwyer 2-17-16 video, right, on the Dwyer Crime Channel here on YouTube, right? And I've just provided you with literally the pages on which in the court transcripts, Robert Fabian testifies. The link to those court transcripts are posted in the comment section to that Dwyer 2-17-16 video. 
give it a look. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.